Hello and welcome. We are here with Yes Welder's MP200 multi-process machine and today I'm going to give you a beginning project to help you really get into your MIG welding and your TIG welding. This machine does both. You can set it up where it doesn't take that much time to actually switch between the two, which we're going to go over as well, as doing a bead pad. Now a bead pad is basically grabbing a thick piece of steel and laying down beads across it one way and then going on top of it, going on top of it the other way, utilizing both MIG and TIG to really hone in and start to see the puddle differently and get used to those two different processes. So right now we have the Yes Welder MP200 set up for MIG. We have our thick piece of steel, so we're gonna lay down the first couple passes on the bottom of this bead pad. All right, so before we begin, I'd like to go over a little bit of MIG welding theory before we start welding itself. One of the biggest problems in beginner welders is torch angle. Now we're gonna wanna keep the MIG gun at a 45 degree angle off the workpiece. A lot of times welders will come in too high, a lot of times welders will come in too low, and both can affect the weld negatively. Now we also wanna be conscious of coming in with the torch away from us or towards us. We really want it straight up and down on this axis and then a 45 on this axis. Now when you're MIG welding, you can either push or pull. So a push would mean we are welding this direction and the bead is actually, the pull's gonna be right behind the contact tip and the wire coming. Now a pull is gonna be when we're pulling the bead this way. If we're pushing a weld, that means we can see where we're going. When we're pulling a weld, we can't see where we're going because the view of where we're going is actually obstructed by the torch itself, the gun itself. That being said, if we're pulling a MIG weld, there's more heat being put into the puddle, so you're gonna get better penetration, but you can't see where you're going. For this exercise, I like to push because it's gonna really teach you how to look at where you're going, make sure you're doing a nice straight weld, the weld isn't zigzagging. You'll be able to keep your eye on the toe and see how the toe is interacting with the weld next to it, and you'll be able to see when you're doing circles with the gun, You'll be able to see how wide the circles are and if they're uniform with what you did previously. Pushing a MIG weld really opens up your viewpoint and can help you get better faster due to the amount of details you can see in the weld. So for this exercise, we're gonna push, we're gonna circle, we're gonna focus on keeping the torch at a 45 degree angle and keeping all of our welds straight. All right, so we did four passes of MIG right next to each other, and when we're welding it, we wanna be paying attention to the leg, which is gonna be the outside of the puddle, and really lining up nice to make a nice even surface, and we're trying to get our welds as uniform as possible. Doing this rep over and over and over is really what can get a beginner good at each welding process. Now we start with MIG, I'm gonna switch the machine over to TIG, and then we're going to go over the top of these with the TIG process. Now let's go over some TIG welding theory before we start the TIG portion of the bead pad. Now with MIG, in the gun, you're gonna have your wire being fed automatically. In TIG, the wire and the heat source, the torch, are separated into two different things. You're gonna use your torch to actually heat the base metal, create the puddle, move the puddle, and then you're gonna manually put the filler rod into the puddle. Now, TIG welding is generally stronger than MIG welding because you can control the penetration. You can control how deep the puddle is, how close you are to the puddle, which is going to make the puddle smaller but kind of more intense. You can be farther away, that's gonna open up your actual arc 
which is gonna widen the puddle. You can decide how much or little rod to put in. You can also decide how often to put in rod. These different variations on TIG welding is what makes, what makes TIG welding such an art and what makes it more difficult, causing you to have to spend more time doing it before you get good at it. But this is the perfect project to start figuring that out for yourself. Now, beginning TIG welders, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start the puddle, create it. This is lift TIG, so we're gonna touch it to the metal, pull it up, that's gonna start the arc. We're gonna create a puddle. Once the puddle is nice and wet, we're gonna move it towards forward, which is gonna move the puddle forward. Then we're going to insert the rod into the puddle, being careful not to touch the rod to the actual tungsten. That will muddy up our tungsten and we're gonna have to stop, take the tungsten out, resharpen it, and start over. Now, when you're starting, we're gonna move the puddle forward, hold, add rod. We're gonna move the puddle forward, hold, add rod. Do this over and over and over until we get to the end of our weld. Now, when you get better at TIG welding, you're actually not gonna have to stop, add rod, stop, add rod. You're gonna be able to have just one continuous motion where you're just moving the puddle, adding rod, going down nice and seamlessly. Now for the bead pad, oftentimes I recommend starting with MIG, so we're gonna have those lines of MIG across the bottom. And then we're gonna go on TIG on top of that because it's gonna create a nice little groove in between the MIG weld beads for us to create a puddle and then follow that line on TIG. Because there is more going on with TIG, we don't have to focus as much about it. Am I going straight? Am I waving? We're just going to move the puddle forward on the crease, add some rod. Move the puddle forward on the crease and add some rod. The first four passes we did on MIG and we laid down four beads together. Now on TIG, we went down the middle with three TIG passes. Now we're gonna switch back to MIG and go down the middle of those TIG passes, essentially creating a pyramid. And that's actually why we're using such a thick piece of steel because we're putting so much heat into this workpiece between the MIG and then the TIG and we're not letting it cool down in between. We're just going, we're practicing, we're doing some reps. We're getting our, our eyes to understand what the puddle's doing. We're making muscle memory. Is That's the reason we need such a thick piece of steel. And you can just get a thick piece of steel at the steel yard and ask for some drop. Drop is basically anything that a previous customer, they had it cut off and left behind, they didn't need it. And oftentimes, steel yards will sell that to you by the pound. So it's a lot cheaper than purchasing a full piece of thick steel. Any size steel will work. You don't have to do four on the bottom, you can do seven across the bottom. It's just really about creating weld on top of weld on top of weld and practicing going between MIG and TIG on the MP200. So we need to switch back to MIG now, so we're gonna head over to the machine and do that. So we got the last two of the MIG passes done. Now we're gonna switch back to TIG and do the final pass across the top down the seam of those two MIG passes. Now, like I said earlier, you can do a V pad of any size. It's just gonna be dependent on how big of a piece of steel you have to start with. This is such a great project to get your eyes used to seeing the differences and your hands used to welding with the differences between MIG and TIG. So let's hop back over to the machine and switch to TIG.
So there you have it, folks. A practice D-pad uses lighting MIG and TIG on Yes Welder's MP200 multi-process machine. This is a great first product when you get the machine just to get used to the settings, how you like things set up. Saving your settings using the memory function so you can recall them later. And switching back between MIG and TIG, familiarizing yourself with the processes and the machine. For more information on Yes Welder's MP200, visit yeswelder.com. And until next time, enjoy welding with Yes Welder.